Around 753 BC, Hosea was a prophet that God called to deliver a message to the descendants of Abraham, the Israelites. And in the book of Hosea, we find a prophecy that lets them know that because they rejected God, they would be punished by the nations. But because of God's grace, he would save and one day revive them. Now this prophecy was partially fulfilled in 722 BC when the Assyrians came and took the Israelites into captivity. But what we are about to see is that the prophecy of Hosea was also written to parallel with the future and has fulfillment in recent events. And by the end of this video, it will be evident that the Bible has foretold history. In the book of Hosea, we see a prophetic warning to the Israelites revealing that since they rejected God, his hand of protection would be removed and their enemies would overtake them. But Hosea also offers hope when he says that their nation will be revived and that one day they will even live in God's presence when the Messiah, the king from the lineage of David, comes in the latter days to rule over them. Now one thing I should say, whenever it mentions the Israelites, it's also referring to the Jewish people because later the Israelites became known as Jews. So this prophecy largely concerns the Jewish people. So the book of Hosea mentions how the Israelites or the Jewish people would one day face persecution and destruction because of rejecting God. But in chapter six, Hosea gives them hope, and through a powerful prophecy, he reveals two things. Number one, he lets them know when God would forgive them and revive the Israelite nation. And number two, he lets them know when God will raise them up to live in his presence. And so the amazing thing is, Hosea here gives a time frame for when the nation would be revived. And history shows that this prophecy was spot on. But before we can get into when their nation was revived, we must first look to see when it was destroyed. So let's look at the prophecy of Zechariah. Zechariah 13 verse seven. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. So here we have God speaking through Zechariah, and he says that when this person called the shepherd is killed, that will begin the moment when the sheep will be scattered and they will lose their nation. First of all, throughout the Old Testament, the people of God, the Jews or the Israelites, were always referred to as God's sheep, his beloved people. And God has always wanted to take care of them and keep them safe from their enemies. But here in Zechariah 13, 7, we see that when this person, this shepherd who watches over the sheep is struck or killed, then the sheep, God's people, the Israelites, will be scattered. Now, to find out when they lost their nation and when they were scattered, we must first see who the shepherd is and when he was killed. Well, look at what Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So it's clear that Jesus identified himself as the shepherd that the Old Testament said would be killed. 
And also notice what Jesus said at the Last Supper when it was almost time for him to die. Matthew 26, 31. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. And so Jesus, again, he identifies himself as this shepherd. So the prophet Zechariah said that when the shepherd is killed, God's people, the sheep, would be scattered. Scattered from where? From the place they have always wanted to be. Jerusalem. You see, this here is a prophecy that was fulfilled in history, and it is one that no one can deny, because at the time of Jesus, the Israelites or the Jewish people, they were safe in Jerusalem. They had their temple and they were at peace being in the land of Israel. So no one would have ever predicted that one day they would ever lose that. But the impossible happened after Jesus, the shepherd was killed. No one could have ever imagined it. But history shows that 40 years after Jesus was killed, Jerusalem and their temple was destroyed. And after that, the scattering of God's people, the Jews, began. And this great event was so catastrophic that historians have even given it a name. The Jewish Diaspora. The Jewish Diaspora refers to when the Jewish people were removed from their land and were taken captive by the nations. Now the amazing thing is that not only did Zechariah say that God's people would be scattered after the shepherd was killed, but even Jesus prophesied this. Look at what he said in Luke. Okay, so here Jesus was um, with his followers and he was letting them know that one day the temple of Jerusalem would be destroyed. And here he is about to let them know also the fate of the Jewish people after that happens. In chapter 21, verse 24, he says, They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all nations. And then he says this, and Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. <sighs> this, is, <laughs> this is so loaded. Because here Jesus says that after he is killed and Jerusalem falls, the Jewish people will be taken captive by other nations. And he says many of them will be killed. And then he says that Jerusalem will be controlled by the Gentiles, which are non-Jewish people, until the appointed time would come for the Jews to regain their land. Okay. So, was Jesus and the prophet Zechariah right? Did the Jewish people become scattered from their homeland and face persecution? And was Jerusalem taken over by Gentiles after the crucifixion? Let's look and see.
is powerful. The book of Zechariah said that when the shepherd, the man close to God, is killed, the sheep would be scattered. And we see that history has unfolded exactly as Zechariah predicted. Jesus was killed in 30 A.D. And 40 years later, in 70 A.D., Jerusalem was destroyed. And then the people of Israel were taken captive. And after that, they were scattered among every nation in the world. It's not coincidence. This, this is prophecy. Now, in the last video, we looked at how the Old Testament also predicted that Jerusalem would be destroyed 40 years after Christ's death. And that was fulfilled in 70 A.D. So be sure to see that video because it gets deep. So this is this is all amazing. It's all amazing. You know, you could either conclude that it's all coincidence or God's word is powerful. <laughs> Because it is absolutely mind blowing that just as it was predicted after God's people rejected and killed his son, the shepherd, that they were then banished from Jerusalem and then taken captives by every nation, just as the scripture said. And archaeological evidence like the Dead Sea Scrolls proves that all of this was written in the Old Testament, all of these prophetic writings, hundreds of years before Jesus even came into the world. And so. What we have just seen here are two major prophecies that have been fulfilled. The first was that the Jewish people would be scattered from their land after Jesus the shepherd was killed. And we saw that that started in 70 AD. And the second prophecy, well, that gets even deeper because it tells us the exact time when God would revive them and give them back their land. <laughs> All right, let me get a drink of water here. Okay, so let's go back to Hosea chapter 6 as it reads. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. And here it is. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. It says, after two days, the Jewish people would be revived. Now remember, with prophecy, Days and numbers are often in prophetic codes. In the last video, we saw a clear example of that with how the 40 days in the book of Jonah represented 40 years in the future. Well, this right here is also prophetic code. And we see the solution for this code in 2 Peter 3 verse 8, as it reads, With the Lord a day it's like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. And also in Psalm 90, verse four, a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. <laughs> now, this is interesting because we know that God lives in eternity, which is a dimension without beginning or end. So our 24 hour days are really irrelevant to God's time space. So when it says that a day to God is a thousand years or a millennium, we must understand that Peter here is referring to an Old Testament prophetic code. You see, with prophecy, the time frame of events do have a literal fulfillment in Old Testament history. But to see how something that happened relates to the future fulfillment, you have to use the prophetic code. In the book of Jonah, we saw that the code was one day equals one year. And that showed us clearly how the whole thing predicted exactly when the temple would be destroyed in 70 AD. Well, here, one day equals one millennium or 1,000 years. 
Okay. <laughs> so understanding that, let's reread the prophecy. After two millenniums, he will revive us. And on the third millennium, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. You see, the prophet was saying that the Israelite nation would be revived, not in two literal days, but in two millenniums. Again, a day to God is a thousand years. And so let's see if this prophecy was fulfilled in history. Okay. Well, first of all, most historians agree that Jesus was crucified in 30 AD. And at the point of his crucifixion, we have seen that that is the point when the shepherd was struck, when their persecution began, when they lost their nation. So in 30 AD, that marked the beginning of their fall. So if you add 1,000 or one millennium to 30 A.D., that brings you to 1030 A.D. So from 30 A.D. to 1030 A.D., here you have one millennium or one prophetic day after they were scattered. But the prophecy said that it would be after two days that they would be revived. So if we count from 1030 AD to 2030 AD, you have the second millennium or the second prophetic day. <laughs> okay. Now remember, Hosea said that after two days, they will be revived. But on the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence. So, when does this third day begin? Well, from 1030 to 230 AD, that's the second day. So the third day is from 2030 AD to 330 AD. So he says that on the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence which begins the third day beginning on 2030 AD. But before that, he says, on the second day, they would be revived. So I want to paint the picture. He says on the third day, that's when they would be raised to live in the presence of God. But before that, in the second day, that's when their nation would be revived. So we should be able to look and see that somewhere close to the third day, but in the second day, we should see in history where their nation, Israel, was revived. Okay, <laughs> this is neat. Well, history shows us that after hundreds of years of being scattered, abused, and banished from Israel, that amazingly, the Jewish people found victory against their enemies, and their nation, the land of Israel, was revived and established in 19. 1848. <sighs> okay, um, yeah. Why is that important? Because 1948 is in the latter part of the second day. But it's right before the dawn of the third day. <laughs> you see, <laughs> prophecy is so precise. It's so precise that even the times and dates line up with history. Meanwhile, on May 14th, 1948, the new government headed by David Ben-Gurion is installed in Tel Aviv. Thus, for the first time since the Roman Legion destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70 AD, the Jewish people have a nation of their own. Thus, history was made as the Jewish state of Israel was born. Conceived in strife and weaned on violence, Israel has flourished to become a constructive voice in world affairs. Her flag became a symbol of hope in a troubled world. 
The Old Testament prophets predicted that after 30 AD, when the shepherd was killed, that the Jewish people would be scattered and taken captive by the nations. We saw that. That's happened. And then it predicted that after two days, but before the third day, they would be revived. That happened in 1948. Well, guess what else? <laughs> Even the date of 1948 has significance within the Bible. Because if you study Bible chronology, you will find that Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, was born exactly 1948 years after God created Adam. So not only does the prophetic code of one day equaling a thousand years show the millennium that Israel would be revived. But even the exact year of his revival finds symbolism in the birth of their father, Abraham. It just all adds up. You see, this is why I don't really spend a lot of time trying to prove that there is a God. Because even if I proved that there is a God, the world would then wonder, well, OK, who is this God? Can you now prove the identity of this God? Who is it? So instead, God has called me to simply reveal prophecy because if the world sees prophecy and sees how everything the Bible said would happen has clearly been fulfilled throughout history. Then it will be without question that the God that is, is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Three days after the battle for Jerusalem, the war was over. In just six days, Israel had won a stunning victory against three different enemies. And on the seventh day, a ceasefire was imposed. Now, we're not done yet. The prophecy isn't over. <laughs> Hope you're in a comfortable seat. So. It says that after two days, they will be revived. We see that happened in 1948 in the second millennium or the second day after Jesus was crucified. But notice what else it says. On the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence. <laughs> you see. The dawn of the third day, or the third millennium since Jesus died on the cross, has not yet arrived. The third day since Jesus' death on the cross begins somewhere around the year 2030. And this third day will last for how long? Well, just like the other days, for a thousand years. A day is like a thousand years. Now. At the second coming of Jesus, when he returns, how long does he promise that he will rule on this earth? <laughs> That's right. For 1,000 years, the millennial reign. And when Jesus returns, what is the first thing that he does? He raises or resurrects those who are waiting for him and they will then live in his presence. <laughs> we'll notice that in Hosea, it says that on the third day, they will be raised to live in his presence. <laughs> wow. <sighs> and what a time it will be. When Jesus comes as the messianic king to rule the nations.
from Jerusalem. Now, the scripture clearly says that no one knows the day or the hour of his return. So that's why I'm not quick to put it out there, you know, when Jesus is going to return or even to say what year it could possibly be. I'm very hesitant to do things like that. But I must say that the season, the season is near. 